Hello, USF MBA class. Uh, I feel privileged to talk to you today. Uh, thanks for your professor, uh, Paul Kemsey, great friend of mine, and his wedding many years ago when he was back as a student at Stetson and beginning his law career. Um, Paul and I have been working together in an effort called Resume Academy, uh, beginning with Dean, your former Dean, Ian Poor, almost 24 months ago, to incorporate into a national uh, leading MBA program the um, specialization of conflict resolution, corporate dispute resolution, dispute system design, negotiation, facilitation. And this class that you all are participating in is, is the first of an effort that began two years ago. So again, I'm privileged to be here today. Um, my background, uh, undergraduate, University of Hawaii, um, Masters, uh, NOVA, uh, Southeastern in um, conflict resolution having concentration on mediation, arbitration, restorative justice, negotiation, facilitation. 25-year uh, veteran of the IT industry, have led multi-million dollar contract negotiations. Uh, consider myself a pretty good uh, negotiator. I'm not a good poker player though. Uh, they always say uh, your best negotiators will be po good poker players. I, I wear quite a bit of emotion when I uh, um, negotiate. Um, and sometimes that's an advantage and sometimes it's a disadvantage. Um, but I, I have the credentials. Um, I, I forgot to mention I'm also a doctoral candidate at the University of Florida. It should take me about 18 more months to be finished. I do have my dissertation topic uh, and uh, I began to work on the research for that. Um, they've asked me today to speak about my area of expertise, e-negotiation. And you may conceptually have differing ideas of what negotiation is, and not necessarily is my definition any textbook or standard definition. When I think about uh, e negotiation, I like to first begin with some, some core principles of negotiation that mean a lot to me that I use. Uh, first is just the whole concept of BATNA, uh, B A T N A, uh, sort of the best alternative to a negotiated settlement. Um, so we all know what we're after for selling something. We know what our price points are and our profitability multiples are. If we're buying stuff, we're probably competing against our own competitors and we should know what they're, they're selling for. Our customers sure do know what they're selling for and likely would have had a proposal previously. So, you know, we have to be um, pretty savvy uh, in understanding where each party is in anticipation of uh, you know, what they're really after. After all, that's the baseline of, of negotiation. And I hope today through this short lecture, 15 minute limit I was told, uh, that uh, you'll think of it in a different context when we think about electronic negotiation. Second is what the concept of looking down from the balcony. I love the concept because from the balcony, especially an experienced negotiator, can watch mistakes, they can watch positive moves, negative moves, you can watch a, a, a negotiation stall or fail, and you have some extreme insight because you're not at the table, actively engaged. And we like to incorporate some of that and we think that's where e-negotiation has some um, uh, advantage because we can incorporate that concept and practice of looking down from the balcony by our software design. Um, the, concept of e-negotiation, I'd like to say, the first time I would have say I witnessed e-negotiation was a decade ago when our Blackberry and Crackberries were first being used. I see I have a few gray hairs. I've already told you I've been in the IT business for more than 25 years. So I've been in some, some old school negotiation, called traditional negotiation, and so we'll call first generation e-negotiation because these Blackberries, you know, they're theoretically non-disruptive, you know, they're underneath the table and that, but it, would, it almost became standard practice in big corporate negotiations that the BlackBerry was the conduit to outside input to the current active negotiation. And you'd, you'd see it on both sides. You try not to be distracted by it, you know, they had their, their volume down. But you know, I would argue that's where I first said, he negotiation, he assisted negotiation. We look at it differently. My company is Rezood, R-E-Z-O-U-D. We're uh, available to be seen in um, all of our uh, products and services at www.rezood.com. 
our flagship product uh, that will launch commercially on September 30th. It's called SettleNow.com. That can be with a hyphen or not. We've incorporated the best practices of e negotiation. And what I mean by best practices is there is a, there's a company, feel free, I guess, and somewhat their competitor, but I recognize them as a competitor as one of the original innovators of e negotiation. They're called Smart Cell, they're a Canadian company. Uh, Dr. Ernie Thiessen wrote his uh, dissertation on e negotiation. If you like reading dissertations, um, you ought to read it, especially if you're interested in e-negotiation. Um, they got a patent almost 20 years ago on e-negotiation. They argue that in e-negotiation you can actually do better than you can in, in regular negotiation. And at first when I heard that, being the traditional table mediator, or table negotiator, I said, no, I don't believe it. But the more and more I studied it, the more and more I thought about it, the more and more, as we began to design the software, I became a disciple of the negotiation. And I hope, again, I only have 15 minutes today. Maybe if you all like what I've said, you'll ask for more. Uh, and if you do, I'm sure Professor Kimsey will a lot for that. Um, but in this limited time, uh, let me give you a couple of real life examples uh, and, and start out with, with Sharing with you a very simple story, simple negotiation, one-dimensional negotiation. There's an orange piece of fruit sitting in the middle of the table. You have two young teenage kids. They're arguing, negotiating over the orange. They both want it. Everybody presumes, they both presume they want the whole orange and they don't really want to settle for less because they're less sophisticated than those of us who have all these advanced degrees and study negotiation. The boy I'm not being in any way uh, sexist, but the boy, let's assume, is bigger, stronger. Um, he probably, at some point in negotiation, says, I'm bigger, and I want to just take it, and there's nothing she could do. She might, on the other hand, say, I'm faster, more fleet at the foot, and I want to take it and run, and he can't catch me. If an adult walks in, or an attorney walks in, or a mediator walks in, or anyone with advanced logical skills, and realizing that what, there's really isn't a lot of stake at stake here, they might say, slice it down the middle, you both get half, you both get half of what you want, maybe that's the presumed botna, and everybody's happy. But in this case, these guys want the whole thing. Well, what is not discovered so often in negotiation for various, various reasons, and of course, this orange example is a sort of one dimension, um, uh, one variable. Um, negotiation. The girl had read a recipe that called for the zest from one orange peel, from the complete peel of one orange. The boy was much more simplistic. He wanted the fruit and he wanted the whole fruit and he didn't want to share it. But no one took time to realize they both could get 100% of what they want. And our e negotiation software modeled after best practices in the e negotiation field allows the active parties in negotiation or dispute, which is obviously have to be negotiated, um, to disclose all the variables of this agreement and rank them in importance. And then the tool monitors that as they try to settle and move things. And in our software, we have a blue side, meaning what you agree on the red side of what you don't agree on, and then the e-negotiation tool sets above that and then allows you to sort of drag and drop the things that they agree on. So you want to get the blue populated and the red shortened, or, you know, that. In the process, you don't disclose, because it would be just like laying all your cards in, 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 a, in a poker table at a poker game, you can't just disclose it all. Our system allows the parties individually to put them up, rank them, rate them, score them on a hundred scale, but we use a facilitator, a professional facilitator, and we use a concept, and it's on our website if you're really interested in it, it's called TEDR, Technology Enhanced Dispute Resolution. Uh, it's 20 pages of the methodology piece, uh, but when we designed the software, we incorporated the methodology 
And the methodology is built around what we call facilitated negotiation. Not mediation, not arbitration, yet. It's only if you get to the red side, you've exhausted uh, you know, the, the resources and time that would be reasonable to put towards it, and that people still have two, three, or more things on the red side. Then you push them down to I mean, to mediation or arbitration. And then those professionals can pick up and get the background of what's you know, the blue and what's been accomplished and who the parties and the personalities of the parties. And then they can pick up and get just focus the mediation on those remaining things. Uh, we're seeing through our test results that um, you're really able to resolve a lot of disputes and negotiations without any need for mediation or arbitration. Now that's scary to the lawyers in the community, maybe the professor even, scary to the professional mediators and arbitrators that you might be able to follow a methodology to get a lot of things settled or agreed upon um, without traditional adversarial methodologies. Um, another concept, and, and we don't have enough time to talk about it, again, if it's something you're interested in, we uh, love to talk. I remember, look at me up on LinkedIn, David W. Puckett, Resume Corporation. Look me up on Facebook if you like. I love to engage with graduate students and get their experience and insight. And many of our products and uh, services have been greatly influenced. We have about six graduate programs that we host internships and practicums with. And some of our best ideas have come from graduate students. So if you're interested. But the, the concept I want to leave you with is a concept of emotional intelligence. Um, big advocate of that. It's built in to settle now. It's a component of negotiation and awareness of who are the parties and what are their emotional intelligence. When you think of emotional intelligence, if you haven't read about it, don't get hung up on the word intelligence, IQ. That would give you a perception that if one person is smarter, they're going to be more effective in negotiation. Not at all. Emotional intelligence and emotional intelligence assessments are to help the facilitator, the intermediary, understand the emotional makeup, the DNA of the parties that are negotiating or disputing and negotiating. And if you have that insight, it can be an extreme value to coach the party to be more effective in negotiation or conflict resolution. So that's conceptually the best I can do in 15 minutes or less to really talk to you about e-negotiation. Don't forget also, we've done a lot of research around the cultural aspects of negotiation. If you're at the table with different cultures, you've got to be very sensitive to those cultural differences. The concept of doing it in the cloud, doing it online, could you decrease the cultural biases, the cultural issues by this e-negotiation? We think so. Um, very early stage, um, um, some books are about online dispute resolution and online negotiation really started to appear at the beginning of the last decade, 2001, 2003, with a couple books that influenced me. So um, I invite you to look at our website. I invite you to reach out to me. I invite you, if this is interesting to you and you'd like to learn more, maybe uh, let Professor Kimsey know. Uh, conclude with this class is being brought to you by, as I said in the beginning, efforts that began two years ago with Dean and Port. We wanted to join forces with a leading nationally ranked MBA program like you have at USF St. Pete and, and be able to give students an offer, opportunity to take a look in dispute resolution so that it becomes um, a, uh, an extension of, of a very quality MBA. So you're all the first to have this training you're really in the country. So thank you for this opportunity and look forward to talking to you again.